Hi there, and welcome to Dundee Piano. Today we're going to have a look at a bit of sight reading with tips for what to look for when you're looking at a new piece of music. In this example I'm going to use Bergmuller and we're going to look at a Barker roll in here and the key of A flat major. So it's a bit of a different key from the other example I gave. I'll put a link to that one as well. But this one, we're going quite slow and quite soft at the start, but it's got some interesting harmonic changes as we go through the chords, on the left hand especially. And we'll look at how to spot those chords and how do they relate to each other and what to look out for when you're looking at a new piece of music that may be um, unfamiliar to you. So this one's fairly unfamiliar to me. I've just went through it with one pupil just now and um, let's see what we can find as we look at the sheet music. Okay. First of all, we're in A flat major, yeah, and we've got four flats. And it uses these half the time in this piece. I say half the time it changes chord and changes key and modulates and moves around a few times. It's quite an interesting um, series of chords in here. But let's look at how it fits together. First of all, the pattern I see is... The first two bars are the same. In more ways than one, they're the same melody on each hand, but they're also the same melody at the same time, an octave apart. So you're working... Yeah, both hands are working the same way, they're in the same position. Pinky to thumb, thumb to pinky, you got it? So that works at the start, and also the end of the song has got this as well, so... That's one thing to look out for, repetition and octave copying. Now, as it moves on, there's a chord... progression and the cadence here and we're working la, la, la. so on top the melody is moving up the way underneath that directly below we've got a third also going up yeah. in terms of the notes of the scale that's following it directly thirds 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 yeah below that it's not another third all the time because it's It's not exactly the same each time, but that finishes out the chord. Uh, providing your harmony for your F minor, your E flat major, and your A flat major. How do we know it's an F minor? Well, the F minor notes are F, A flat, C, and they've just rearranged down to the C. to the E flat major chord which is root position and then it's going to an A flat which is first, second inversion, right? But be able to spot a chord like that really helps me play quicker on the piano because you can see oh that's an F minor, that's an A flat, that's an A flat. So you don't have to think of 12 notes or whatever, you just think of the, the chord changes, yeah? Yeah, the next chord change is a bit different, so it's moving up the way still. There we go, so it's good natural on the top. Look out for that. We're into C major, ba quite a big jump. Yeah. Accidental popping in just for one bar on that E. Okay, there we're into the song. Cantabile, so the right hand's gonna be playing a nice smooth melody, the left hand's gonna be working with these Kind of bouncing chords. They have a they have a kind of gap in between each one, each quaver. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's what you're aiming at for that type of chord shape. But just rewind one second here. We had a chord in between an E flat seventh. There we are. And this 
seems to be a recurring feature in this song. It keeps coming back with the E flat and sevenths. And its primary aim, I think, is to resolve to an E flat. It tends to do that, or sometimes that, that, with a variation. But when we see a chord like that, especially in this kind of music, it's usually pushing down a fifth. So we've got another video looking at the circle of fifths and how they relate to each other, but from E flat to A flat is a fifth down. So it resolves to an A flat major. And once you get that, the left hand is on your A flat major, then it has a little bit of that E flat seven. seventh chord. So look at where it changes, it's the low harmony changes. The thumb stays on an E flat. The next chord changes just the D flat. So it's a very small change on the second or a suspended fourth. Then on this line we're seeing the E is still there but the chord underneath goes a third is a stepping down to an E flat and then F minor, there we go. And then finally, uh, more, uh, more kind of diminished this one. Uh, Resolving to C minor, same as basically the same kind of perfect cadence, I guess you could call it, where it's going from one chord to the next and back to a different key. C minor for a bar. And a little chromatic step to moving towards the E flat seventh again, which again resolves to the E flat. first melody again. A couple of chord changes on the second page here between, well it echoes the diminished again, but between E flat and the, okay so this is a slightly different type of chord change. Instead of the fifth, la, fifth down it's a fifth up I suppose. Because you're going from an E flat major to an A flat minor, back to an E flat. So the fifth is the other way, if you see what I mean. Anyway, that's off the topic. Again, we have a constant no E flat. And the change on the top, okay. The rest of the song is almost all the same as the first part, except for one little change in the middle where the E, e flat changes to D flat and underneath the chord drops. So we have a strong D flat chord, but then it goes minor. Again, that the nature of that chord change is similar to the one above. From the fourth minor to the first, 
and you're back to A flat major again. of that chord change there. D flat, minor, and it finishes nicely with that. Uh, the first chord sequence. Okay, so in a nutshell we're looking at chord changes on left here most of the time and how they stay the same in some cases. The top note for example stays the same and then underneath the harmonies are changing. Okay. Or in other cases the low note stays the same and above the harmonies change. But if you can see what's changing and what's remaining it may give you some little pointers as to what your hand's got to do. Rather than reading every single note every single time, you can see the shape of what changes. And usually they're in thirds or fourths, sometimes seconds. But two, three, four, five, you get the idea. If you can spot those gaps, um, you'll be well placed to sight read all kinds of music. But um, hopefully that's helpful to you. Uh, to hear a wee bit of sight reading on this piece. Now I'm going to have a wee go at playing it all the way through. Um, let's see how we go. Okay. Meantime, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.